Hello, it's Lex MPI back with another video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It will be much appreciated. Today, I'm going to take a look at... Um, well, this video was inspired by an article I read um, on CTAM, as you can see on screen. And it's regarding uh, zombie tokens. Um, and the article uh, that I'll quickly run through here goes on to describe quite a few cryptocurrency that are... Uh, relatively high on the crypto market.com on the uh, regards to market cap but essentially they're dead they came about in 2016 2017 um, when the ICOs were crazed so any of you that were in the crypto space back in 2017 2016 will know that actually even 2018 also will know that um, the market went crazy and basically anyone that could um, create a cryptocurrency or a chain um, was able to make a few million over, literally overnight. And what you had is you had quite a few cryptocurrencies that grew very quickly and end up with massive market caps. Long story short, they had first mover advantage. Um, and essentially they were bloatware. They were, you know, forks of Bitcoin, forks of um, Ethereum, um, and um, they, you know, accumulated massive market caps simply because they were, you know, the first of the party. And um, now they have these massive market caps because people have bought them and hold huge bags of these cryptocurrencies because they bought them in the craze in 2017, didn't sell. And now they just have bloated crypto um, market caps. So what I want to do, I want to quickly go to um cryptomarketcap.com and we'll take a look at the one i'm talking about so the cryptocurrencies that i'm going to be discussing as zombie cryptocurrencies are going to be the ones that came about in 2017 ish uh, and they weren't particularly original they were essentially forks of other cryptocurrencies so obviously you have your top coins uh bitcoin ethereum and then binance coin now doing particularly well um and let me scroll through it and i'll pick out the zombie cryptocurrencies i'm talking about litecoin a fork of Bitcoin. It was meant to be a faster Bitcoin, but we have Bitcoin. So what's the actual purpose of it now? At number nine, um, we then have Bitcoin Cash. The name pretty clear. It's a fork of Bitcoin. Um, we have Stellar. So this was one of the uh, currency type cryptocurrencies, similar to Ripple. Um, Stellar about and actually doing okay-ish compared to the other zombie quote unquote cryptocurrencies I'm talking about. Um, Dogecoin, Dogecoin, I mean, I'm going to leave that one out simply because, you know, Elon Musk has been pumping that all, you know, for the past six months or so. So that's a bit of a special case. Tron, perfect example of a cryptocurrency that came about um, as a layer one solution, an alternative to Ethereum. Uh, but what's it done recently? I'm not too sure. Um, we have one well, that Monero, which I think was a kind of a privacy coin. Um, we have EOS, we have, uh, where's NEO? There we go, NEO, that's, what, that's one of the other ones. That's the, another one of the cryptocurrencies that was meant, essentially meant to be, I think, China's um, answer to Ethereum. But we can take a look at how have those coins done? I'm a data analyst by trade. Um, so what I've done is I've kind of used a bit of software to essentially model and show uh, the growth of these cryptocurrencies uh, since November. So what I'll do, I'll switch over to that now and we'll take a look at how these cryptocurrencies have compared and fared against some of the more the newer spaces in the crypto market. Um, things that are actually giving utility, such as DeFi, such as NFT, and some of the newer alternative layer one solutions like Polkadot and Cardano. So I'll switch over to those graphs now. Uh, thanks again. So what I have here is a graph of multiple cryptocurrencies um, starting on the 4th of November 2020. That was in and around when um, the bull market really started picking up some serious momentum. And what I've done, essentially, I've started them all out essentially at zero um, back in back at that date, 4th of November 2020. And what this these graphs, this, these lines show is that the growth at, the, at this particular point versus that point in November. So for example, as of the 14th of March, 2021, the price of sushi is 4,347% um, higher than it was uh, the 4th of uh, November. And for example, uh, let's have a look here, MANA, the NFT token, 
the price of mana is 1,451% higher than it was on the 1st of November 2020. So um, this, this is what this graph shows essentially. Uh, and what I wanted to do is I wanted to compare the growth of some of the zombie tokens versus some other cryptocurrencies. And what I've kept, I've kept Bitcoin and Ethereum there um, essentially as um, lines that we can compare these other groups of cryptocurrencies to. So uh, my strategy, generally speaking, is that um, if I'm holding cryptocurrency, it should be beating Bitcoin or Ethereum. The reason for that is because Bitcoin and Ethereum are kind of the mainstays. So the two cryptocurrencies that we know are going to weather the crypto storm. Other cryptocurrencies, we're not as sure about, generally speaking. So if I'm going to take additional risk in an asset class, cryptocurrencies, that's already very risky, then it needs to be returning a higher reward for that risk than holding Bitcoin or Ethereum. If it's not beating Bitcoin and Ethereum, why am I holding it? So let's take a look here um, at the uh, quickly, let's have a look at the zombie coins. So as you can see here, the zombie coins, the zombie coins not doing particularly well here. The growth on the best one, which is XLM, is at 503% versus November. That's pretty good, right? Uh, until you start comparing it to others uh, that are doing a hell of a lot better. Let's take a quick look at what the zombie coins actually are. The zombie coins uh, that I've picked are Litecoin, Neo, Omizgo, Tron, XLM, and XMR. Either all cryptocurrencies that came about in 2017, 2018, they're the older cryptocurrencies, and they're not hot anymore. They're just not hot. And as I said earlier, what's happened is that people bought these cryptocurrencies en masse back in 2017 and are holding these bags and haven't sold them. I'll put a link up to a video I did a couple of months ago. I went through my portfolio and I was explaining that I had I held quite a few of these coins and I sold these coins and instead, I started buying DeFi tokens because that was where the industry was going. That was where the growth was taking place. And these cryptocurrencies weren't doing that well. They were doing okay, but everything was DeFi. And now it's NFTs. You have to move with the markets. And that was a great decision I made. This was back in, it may have been early January I did that video. And... Um, one of the best decisions I've ever made because the DeFi space, the DeFi tokens, and now NFT tokens have done amazingly well and outpaced the growth of the Litecoin I held, the Neo I held, and the Tron I held at the time. Um, so let's have a look at these zombie coins, right? And, you know, let me just highlight Bitcoin and Ethereum. There we go. There is Ethereum and there is Bitcoin. And the only one that's done better than those two is Excellent, Stella. The rest of them have underperformed versus Bitcoin and Ethereum, as you can see here. Let me unhighlight these. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and look at all these. And if I, there we go. So XMR, OMEs go, Bitcoin Cash, look at that, all underperforming. All underperforming versus Bitcoin and Ethereum. And let's take a look at DeFi. And then some of the newer layer one solutions. Um, so let's have a look at DeFi. So here we go, some, some DeFi tokens here. We have Aave, Comp, Sushi, and Uni. Uh, so Sushi Swap, there you go. Um, clearly the winner here, as far as growth versus November. Uh, and then we then have Uni, we have Aave, and then we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Comp. So Comp actually in the DeFi space actually underperformed versus competitors when we compare from November to the uh, end of March here. Um, but the, these, the, these three large DeFi tokens have way outperformed, way outperformed um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they were good holds, very good holds. You know, that just kind of highlights that further. They have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, you know, these are the, the DeFi tokens here. Um, then you have the layer one solutions. So the layer one solutions are essentially um, cryptocurrencies that are essentially Ethereum killers. They're meant to be smart chain platforms that uh, replace Ethereum and are faster, quicker, and speedier. But essentially, they haven't got the market share that Ethereum does have. 
So those coins are uh, Cardano, uh, Dot and Zilliqa. Those are the three main ones I picked. Um, they're the biggest actually. Um, so let's just take a quick look and see how they compare to uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. So Ethereum and Bitcoin down here and look, all three have outperformed Bitcoin. So you have uh, Cardano at 1,264%. Um, Zill at 950% uh, and DOT at 804% and the growth on Bitcoin Ethereum is 400, around 400%. So uh, DOT at the lowest is uh, double the growth of Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I can validate my holds there because they've outperformed Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now the hot one, the latest one, NFTs, the NFT space, right? Uh, crazy growth in the NFT space. It's, uh, you know, wild, 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 wild. Uh, chills there is actually distorting the graph slightly because the growth has been so incredible. Um, but um, the point we're trying to make here is, is that uh, if we just compare it to the Bitcoin Ethereum down here at 400%, we have Mana, which is Decentraland, uh, at 1,451%. You have ENJ at 1,930. And then uh, Chills up there at 5,404. Um, crazy high growth on Chills. Uh, but, you know, the, I, I picked essentially the biggest uh, uh, NFT tokens and uh, you know this is the growth we've seen in the NFT space as you can see actually they were pretty flat um, with Ethereum and Bitcoin uh, up until uh, end of Feb so if you got into the NFT space end of Feb you're laughing because the growth has been amazing since then chills in particular but as you can see here um, output in Bitcoin very heavily Let's go back. Let's go back to the zombie chart and see essentially the fact that you know the majority of the cryptocurrencies here are underperforming versus Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this goes back to the point I made earlier. If you're holding cryptocurrencies other than Ethereum and Bitcoin, those coins need to be outperforming Ethereum and Bitcoin. If not, you're taking higher risk and getting no reward for it. And this is why you need to keep your ear to the street in regards to what's hot in the crypto space. For example, more recently in my portfolio, I have added into the NFT space, got myself some exposure to some NFT tokens. Am I a little bit late? Potentially. Am I ahead of a lot of people? Probably. Have I gotten rid of Litecoin, Neo, Amizgo and Tron from my portfolio? I did that months ago because they weren't moving. They weren't making more money than Ethereum and Bitcoin. They had to go. So the question I have for you guys is, are you still holding zombie tokens? Old cryptocurrencies from the 2017, 2018 era of ICOs that I just sat there in the top 100 cryptocurrencies, but they're not moving. It's the DeFi tokens that are moving. It's the NFTs that are moving. It's the new layer one solutions with DOT, your ADA, your Zillicas that are moving. I'm thinking about that, you know, and for, for some of you that, you know, just, just bought the top 10 cryptocurrencies or, you know, just have old cryptocurrency bags from way back when, have a think about getting out of those older 2017 cryptocurrencies and moving um, yourself into um, some of these newer, sexier, more interesting and ultimately higher return plays. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, if you could like and subscribe, you're much appreciated. Uh, everyone have a nice day. Next MPI. Bye.